so yeah, this is a protocol detection, uh, a deep dive into how Linkerd achieves zero config. Um, so my name is Kevin Lime Kuehler. Uh, I am a software engineer at Buoyant. Uh, here are not too active on Twitter, but my handle is up there. Um, you can reach out to me on GitHub or our uh, Linkerd Slack. Um, so I've been at Buoyant and working on Linkerd for just a little over three years now. Um, and it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, so for something so core to the CNCF, it's um, CNCF, it's fascinating to see how the ecosystem has uh, changed over the years. Um, but there's also just been a lot of challenges. Um, the things that we work on can be hard to solve sometimes, fairly cutting edge. Um, and require a lot of design decisions. So today I'm kind of here to talk about one of the things that I've really enjoyed um, designing over my time. Um, yeah. So what's the story here? Um, so up here earlier was uh, my boss, William Morgan, and he was talking about, you know, Linkerd and service meshes should be boring. You shouldn't have to think about them um, as, as a user, um, which I agree with, but also as an engineer um, that works on a service mesh, I find that once you like really like look under the hood, there can be a lot of really interesting things in there. Um, and so today for talk, when I'm talking about protocol detection and, and the things that we do to handle certain protocols, it's something that I have found to be really interesting as I work on. Um, so I'm hoping that everyone here also finds it to be as interesting as me. Um, and I'm always happy to talk about it at the end. Feel free to find me, ask questions. Um, I'll also upload the slides afterwards. So. I'll have some diagrams later. Uh, Lynn, I, th I think we used a similar diagram tool, so um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to take pictures of slide of diagrams, I'll have them uploaded later. So I'm going to assume during this talk some level of knowledge about um, how I think most service meshes work these days, um, but to just give a quick overview right now, um, this is specific to Linkerd, but um, can be pretty generalized. So we have a control plane and we have a data plane. Um, so the data plane is going to be a pod and you're going to have your application container on there. And then you're going with the injection model you're going to have a proxy uh, for Linkerd. That's the Linkerd proxy for other service meshes. That tends to be the Envoy proxy. Um, every pod then uh, talks to one single control plane. And for Linkerd, the components within that are the uh, identity service, where each proxy gets its identity for MTLS, um, policy, uh, destination, which I'll be talking a little bit more about um, during this presentation, um, proxy injector for um, handling injection. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the basic architecture. And like I said, I'll, I'll get a little bit more into uh, how we use the destination to handle protocol detection. And again, I'll try to stay pretty general where I can. I don't want this, this isn't you know, a trying to sell you specifically on Linkerd. It's it's more about protocol detection and other service meshes may do something similar. Um, I'm I'm sure every everyone has has this thing that makes it super interesting. So um, before I dive into protocol detection, I want to clarify a little bit about what zero config means in the in the title. Um, so Linkerd is easy to install. Uh, it tries not to break existing applications. It strives to use Kubernetes primitives uh, when possible and requires minimal configuration. Um, so I'd like to focus on minimal configuration and how that affects existing applications. Um, so every application uh, is going to have some protocol that it uses, whether that's TCP, 
UDP or something built off of one of the built off one of those like HTTP, SMTP, or MySQL. Uh, in order for Linkerd to not break existing applications, uh, it must be able to be installed and all these protocols continue working as they were before. And what I mean by that is when you install Linkerd, you don't need to go around and say, you know, service X is this protocol and service Y is this protocol. It just keeps working. So how do we achieve this minimal configuration that I'm talking about? Protocol detection. So put simply, protocol detection is the ability for the uh, proxy to peek the first few bytes of every client connection and determine which protocol that client is using. So let's first remember that all meshed application traffic, inbound and outbound, is gonna travel through a proxy. Um, and therefore, the proxy is going to see the first few bytes of each connection that it handles, and it's, it uses these bytes to determine which protocol that client is using. So up here we can, uh, we can see the prefaces for HTTP 1 and 2. Um, there are, each protocol is going to have some preface that can be used by the proxy, and the proxy can confidently say, you know, this is this certain protocol and make decisions based off of that. So why does protocol detection matter? Uh, so most features of a service mesh fall into one of three buckets, uh, observability, reliability, and security. Uh, understanding which protocol is being used is fundamental to each of these categories. So to dive a little bit more into that first, uh, observability um, is you know, one of the core things is knowing which protocol is being handled so that the proxy can parse that traffic coming through and provide additional details. Uh, if that traffic is HTTP, for example, then it, it can record the number of requests and responses um, and the response codes. Additionally, once it knows the traffic, requests and responses, it can calculate latencies, volumes, error rates. Um, if the proxy can't determine the protocol, we're really just limited to the number of bytes read and received by the proxy. Um, and how that shows up is, you know, here's some screenshots from the Linkerd dashboard, for example. Um, I have a meshed curl pod and a meshed Nginx Engin pod. When I send a request from the curl pod to the Nginx pod, we can see the path, uh, the latency, uh, success rate. Um, again, pretty simple example, but this is the kind of things that we get when we know the protocol that we're handling. If the proxy was unable to determine the protocol, um, we wouldn't really get all this. Uh, so reliability, um, again, a lot of the features are gonna, um, such as reliability, uh, rely on knowing the protocol. Um, continuing the example of assuming that we're working with HTTP, we can move from uh, connection level load balancing to request level load balancing. Um, we can configure retry policies, um, and we can observe failures when they occur. And then finally, security. Uh, protocol detection is a little um, less important here, but the, the main thing is that we know if the application is already uh, encrypting the traffic, and the proxy can peek that and say, you know, this is already TLS, so I'm not going to worry about re TLSing it, even if um, we're talking to a meshed server. So when does protocol detection fail? Um, the, so everything that we've talked about so far um, is, going, is usually a protocol that the client is responsible for sending the initial traffic. Um, and these protocols are you know, known as client speaks first protocols. Um, and they initiate the connection and they also send the initial traffic and the proxy sees what bytes the client sends and can determine the protocol 
before it establishes a connection to the server. Uh, because before it establishes a connection to the server, um, it will make decisions like load balancing, if there's um, several endpoints, and, and things like that. Um, so now, server speak source protocols. Uh, these are protocols where the server is listening for a client to initiate the request, but unlike the previous examples like HTTP, it's the server that sends the first bytes on the connection. Um, so it may, for example, be telling the client its version or other important metadata. Um, above are you know, some protocols that are server speaks first or where the client uh, kind of keeps the connection warm, but doesn't necessarily send initial traffic. And as you can see, th these aren't really that uncommon. Um, so this is a, something that the proxy uh, should be able to handle well. So now that we understand when protocol detection fails um, and the protocols that cause these failures, I haven't really explained like why these failures actually happen. Uh, the server doesn't eventually respond because the proxy never makes a connection in the first place. Um, so here's a scenario where there's a mesh client and a meshed, or in this case, just a MySQL pod. Um, and the client application container initiates a connection to the MySQL server, which is first intercepted by the proxy. Um, and before the proxy initiates its own connection to the MySQL server, it waits for traffic sent by the client so that it can determine which protocol is being used and make decisions like which load balancer to use if there's mo multiple MySQL endpoints. Um, as we've covered, though, it's the server that is responsible for sending the initial traffic in the MySQL case. So the proxy is now stuck waiting uh, for a connection, and it never makes the other connection to the MySQL server. So before I dive into the, the solution that we now have, um, I'd like to first cover like, how we solved this before. So we could skip certain ports, uh, skip proxying certain ports. Uh, how this worked is that um, there are skip inbound and outbound ports. Um, and this is handles, handled at the IP tables level. So every pod is going to have IP table rules. Um, and if you configure a pod to skip, uh, skip you know, port 3306 outbound, that means that when a uh, application container sends a request to some destination with port 3306, IP tables is the first thing that gets that request, says uh, we are not sending this to the proxy first. And so um, the application now just es establishes a connection directly to that destination. Um, and this means that the proxy never sees that. Um, so this is good because we now are handling server speak source protocols fine. Um, but it's not good because this isn't going through the proxy and now none of this application is meshed. So um, if uh, for like MTLS, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get observability. You're not going to get the reliability features of uh, retries and load balancing and things like that. Uh, we could also stop trying to detect the protocol after a certain point. Um, so we can, you know, this is handled with a protocol detection timeout. Um, the proxy attempts to detect the protocol for some certain period of time. By default in Linkerd, this is 10 seconds. Um, and if it fails to detect the, connect the protocol, then it passes the connection through as TCP. Um, the upside to this is that this traffic is now meshed. Um, you get MTLS and all the observability features. But new connections experience a 10 second timeout, which is not ideal. Um, this is a issue that has come up in, you know, if you've ever popped in our Slack, um, we help, you know, this is like one of the log lines we look for in that um, we have an outbound connection, the client address, it's going to some server, port 3306. Um, and we are continuing after a certain timeout, um, and that timeout is the fact that we could not detect the protocol. 
Um, we usually look for these log lines if users come in and say, hey, I'm experiencing a 10 second connection delay, what's going on here? So this leads us to opaque ports. Um, so we've re reviewed the two existing solutions of skip ports and protocol detection timeouts. Both of these were temporary solutions and uh, they both had their downsides, um, but opaque ports encompass uh, both of these by leveraging the control plane's destination service and ALPN if both the client and the server are meshed. So here's where we're going to dive a little bit more into what exactly the destination pod is or destination service is doing. Um, so we can see a pretty simplified example. Um, the client pods proxy has received an outbound connection request for 10.4201 port 3306. Uh, it asks the destination service about additional metadata uh, for this destination. Um, the information exp it expects back is the destination's TLS identity, a list of endpoints if there are uh, multiple, um, multiple endpoints behind that destination, metric labels, and if this destination is an opaque destination. Um, so the destination service takes this request uh, and because it's on the same cluster uh, in this case as the destination, it can look directly at that MySQL pod and it can look at the annotations on it. It can, uh, from those annotations, it can see that this has been marked as opaque. Uh, it can look at the pod spec of that MySQL server and see that it's injected, um, and it takes that information, bundles it up in a destination profile, and sends it back to the client proxy. And the client proxy is responsible for using that destination profile to make these protocol uh, t detection decisions. So uh, this is the most text slide. Uh, so I will try to keep this brief, but basically what we're seeing here is I made two destination requests. So I'm just running the destination service locally. Um, and it's, I made it for the same path, 10.42, 0, 14, port 80. The difference between these two destination service requests is that I, added, I configured uh, the destination, I think it was an Nginx pod in this case, uh, to be opaque on port 80 for the second request. And so you can see that the responses are these structured destination profiles that I was explaining on the last slide. But the second destination request is di differs from the first uh, with the red highlighting. We can see that there's now two new fields returned to the client proxy in this case. The first is this opaque protocol true, and the second is this protocol hint that says, uh, you know, the, the opaque transport with an inbound port of 4143. And these two fields are uh, the, the, the crux for how we implemented opaque ports, and I'll be explaining um, how, these, how the proxy actually uses these fields um, to, to solve this problem. So how do we use opaque protocol field? Basically, um, we're kind of dived, in, dived inside of the pod now, um, and we have this application container and then the proxy container. And one of the first things that the proxy container looks at is this opaque protocol field. If it's false, then the proxy, when it's uh, making the connection, it's going to wait to detect the protocol. If opaque protocol is set to true, then the proxy knows you know, the client is not going to be sending any information on this, so I'm going to pass this through as TCP and make the connection to the server right away. Um, also keep in mind that this happens very early in, in the proxy, in, in the path that the connection takes, um, because after it's just determined if it's going to use TCP or detect the protocol, it still has to make decisions like if it's going to uh, encrypt the traffic or not. So before I explain the opaque transport field, I want to explain real quick why we actually annotate the destination. So the opaque ports uh, annotation 
it, you're supposed to, we put it on the destination. Um, and it's for the reason that on the left here, we have the client pod. And if the proxy can't determine the protocol, it'll pass through that traffic because it's, it's just sending this traffic some, to some destination. It doesn't really care if it, um, if it can't determine the protocol. And then, you know, if, say, it waits 10 seconds, it doesn't get anything, it'll just start passing that traffic through. Maybe then it gets the client hello for an MTLS connection. Um, it doesn't really care if that gets to the wherever it's going later. Um, but on the destination side of things, the proxy can't time out and then send this to the application because it may, like if, if the proxy receives an MTLS connection and then says, oh, I can't determine the protocol, I'm just gonna start sending this all right into the application and then it gets a client hello for an MTLS connection. It's now feeding the application just a bunch of uh, basically garbage traffic because it's all encrypted. Um, so therefore the destination needs to know if its ports are gonna be opaque or not and the clients can just observe that. So now uh, jumping into how opaque transport is used. Um, so we've established that we should not detect the protocol for a connection using the opaque protocol field, uh, but now we need to ensure that the connection is tls if the server is also meshed. Um, and what I mean by this is that um, the proxy is making an outbound connection and it's determined that it should not detect the protocol, um, but now we need to determine whether it should TLS the connection. And it has to be careful about doing this. If the server isn't meshed, then um, the proxy doesn't want to encrypt that traffic because the server isn't going to know how to decrypt it. So it has to, the client has to also know the server it has another Linkerd proxy and that we, um, that Linkerd proxy will be able to decrypt it before it passes it into the server. So this is where opaque transport field comes into play. Uh, we've decided that you know, opaque protocol is true, so that we're gonna use TCP. And now we look at opaque transport field. Uh, if there is no opaque transport field in the protocol hint, then we'll pass just to the original port number, which in this case is port 3306. If we do have an inbound port that we should use, in this case it's 4143, and I'll explain why in a sec, then we're going to pass our traffic to that port. Um, and that port tends to be the proxy on the other end, uh, because the proxy is gonna be running on a separate port than the uh, application. Um, and so it's pretty simple to get. Here is uh, some simplified code from the control plane, uh, go. And we basically, the des destination service, when it's making this destination profile that I talked about before, looks at the pod spec, loops through all the containers until it finds the Linkerd proxy. Um, it then loops through all of the environment variables in the proxy, and it looks for this proxy inbound listen adder environment variable. Once it finds that, then it takes that address and it says uh, in the destination profile, hey, the proxy is listening on this port, 4143. Uh, so when you establish uh, this um, TLS connection, send your traffic to there, and then it will go to the application port 3306. And so that's, when ALPN com comes into play. So ALPN is application layer protocol negotiation, and it's a TLS extension that allows an application to negotiate which protocol should be performed over a secure connection. The protocol that is performed over this se secure connection in meshed scenarios is this transport L5D.io version one. Um, and so, what this is, is it's this uh, additional protocol that we wrap an MTLS connection with, and the client 
and the server, which, which are, in this case, are both Linkerd proxies, are responsible for knowing um, that we're dealing with this transport protocol that's wrapping an MTLS connection. Um, if the client knows that the server uh, speaks this transport L5D IO protocol, then it knows that it's talking to port 4143, and the first thing it sends is this little header that says, hey, once we've established our connection, um, in this header is the actual destination port, 3306 in this example, so send this traffic to there once you've decrypted it. And this kind of explains that um, in that the client proxy says, you know, hey, do you speak this? The server proxy says, yep, I'm good to go. Client proxy says, okay, here is this header port, 3306. Um, once you start receiving my traffic and you've decrypted it, uh, take that traffic and send it to this port uh, in your pod. And so that's how we're able to uh, have this traffic encrypted, uh, but it's also how the server proxy knows where to send it on the pod once it's been decrypted. So that's how we use these fields and the destination service to, to achieve this. So here's kind of like the, the last major decision tree that, that we work through. Um, and so sometimes configuration is required. Uh, the text looks a little small in here, but up, up, up at the top, um, the first thing that we determine is, is this protocol wrapped in TLS? If it is, then no configuration is ever going to be required. Um, if it's not, then we have to look at the opaque ports. Uh, if, it's, if it is an opaque port and we are in the network that we're aware of, no configuration is required. Um, and if the destination is not in this cluster's networks, then we have to uh, enable uh, profile searches for that destination so that we can uh, see if it's opaque or not. Um, you can mark destinations as, op as opaque that aren't necessarily meshed or on that cluster. Um, and if it's not an opaque port by default, then you have to add it if we're working with something in the cluster network, uh, and if it's uh, not annotated as opaque and it's not in the cluster networks, then you do have to fall back to skipping it um, so that it doesn't go through the proxy in the first place. Uh, we, I talked briefly about, and William up, was up here earlier talking about policy. Um, it's kind of the, one of the newer ways that we've introduced recently to mark destinations as opaque. Um, you can use servers and server policies to uh, handle uh, marking destinations as opaque if you don't want to worry about configuring, um, configuring uh, the through annotations. Um, so yeah, uh, policy is still pretty new, but it's will probably be the default way that we move to for uh, marking things as opaque. So yeah, uh, questions I think I'm a little low on time here. So um, yeah, I, if anyone has questions that they want to ask right now, feel free. Um, I'm also happy to talk if, if you find me later about this. Um, again, I find this just to be very interesting. So if you have any more questions, feel, feel free to find me after and ask, but uh, yeah, seems like no questions right now, so that's it for me. Um, so again, this has all been pretty specific to Linkerd. I work at Buoyant and we are hiring. Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>